Welcome you YouTube guitar Harley Benton fans. You look for a bargain and uh, Harley Benton usually brings you that bargain. So let's look at um, the guitar that's been around for a little bit. Uh, Andy's talked about this one and um, I think he was involved even with saying, hey, I, would, I want a fatter neck and then they did a fatter neck. Uh, the DC Junior has been around, but I've never actually looked at it. And then this is the fat neck version. How much fatter is the fat neck on the DC Junior fat than it is on the DC Junior? I can tell you. I have this uh, one in TV yellow, which is a. That's not a no. That's that's not a double cut. That's a single cut. Is it? I don't even know what that thing is called anymore. Um, but it's kind of a similar idea, and realistically, similar. But this might be a fat neck. I don't know. It's not a baseball bat. It's a it's a regularly thicker neck. C shape. What do I know? Uh, it doesn't get in the way in any way. I don't think it's as fat as the fat makes you believe it is. Now let's look at stats. I'm holding this the wrong way. This is the faded cherry version. Got a mahogany body, set neck right there, so it's glued in. Ebony fretboard, dot inlays, 24.72 inches, so a good four trouts when they're about seven months old. Uh, 43 millimeters up here. 305 millimeter fretboard radius, which is a 12.01 inch. Graphite saddle, 22 medium jumbo frets, Roswell P90, stacked Onico 5 dog ear humbucker. So it's on top of it. Ah, oh, these are in the guitar, and this is dog ear, so it's on top of it. And it's stacked, so this is P90, and you pull this, and then you kind of have a stacked P90 for less noise and different sound. Volume, tone, push pull for single coil humbucker. Single coil humbucker, so it's stacked. WC wraparound, three ply pickguard, chrome hardware, Wilkinson style tuners, which are doing a fine job. It's got a bit of a volute, which is very nice up there. So you can see the volute, and there are the tune skis. Pretty. Um, what else do you need to know? This is a very simple guitar. Come to the chance, faded cherry, no case. Clocks in at, I think, 249, which is still pretty damn low for a guitar. Now, Harley Benton has up, have, has, brr, ha, Harley Benton has, well, if it's a company, they has, but if it's the people that I know from Harley Benton, they have. Harley Benton has up their game, but the people from Harley Benton have up their game. English is easy, actually. I've reviewed Harley Benton guitars from very early on in my YouTube career and from very early on in the Harley Benton career uh, in their history. And I think gone are the days where we're looking for glue residue somewhere. Um, there are still the occasional nut, which isn't perfect. Let me check. Nicely done. Sometimes... The, the strings aren't actually going perfectly through them in, in the middle of the nut kind of diverge. But look at this. That's what it's supposed to be like. Obviously, the G-string is going to go out of tune because it does on these types of headstocks. So gone are the days of the little flaws that you could totally forgive because it was a cheap guitar. No. They're not resting on their laurels and saying, well, we make cheap guitars, so we, we can totally get away with all the crap. They try to improve. And I'm not saying that because I've been working with them for so long. I'm not saying that because Toman uh, and Harley Benton is paying me to make this video, which they are. I'm saying this because that's what I'm noticing. So whether you want to believe it or not, that's fine. I will also tell you the crap, which on this guitar, interestingly, it doesn't speak to me majorly. It doesn't, like, I, this is ridiculous. Uh, the sounds on this one are amazing. I don't need the four knobs. Um, I do like 
when I buy something, the ability to have more sounds. So I really like that neck pickup. This is a phenomenal guitar that realistically you shouldn't do anything on in terms of modding. My, fr uh, my friend Bernd Klitz just, I think he ordered this and it was not, no, nah, he ordered the CST24 with two P90s. And he was like, ah, that's not a good guitar. I'm like, well, then you got a bad one because the one I have is good. So he sent it back and I recommended this one and he got it in white and he was blown away. He said, that's a phenomenal guitar and the guy's got good guitars. He, he spends the money on good shit, but he wanted to try some P90s and he was blown away. So yeah, this I love. I will use this for an upgrade project just to show what's possible once I find the time in the Luthier Yoshi has the time as well. I'm not the biggest fan of just having a neck pickup. You are, because that's why you're watching this video. And I know my buddy Phil X, who plays for Bon Jovi, is because he rips out his pickups everywhere. And he says, and that might be something to it, if you have a magnet right here and you're not using it because you're on the bridge, that's actually affecting the vibration of the strings. And there's something to that. So here, you only have the pickup you're actually using if you're using primary bridge pickups. But for me, that's always like, oh, that thinner mid-focus sound. I want more flexibility. But if that's what you're looking for, that's what you're gonna hear. The thing that I'm noticing when I, I did a 10 hour live stream with this, when we uh, did the song in the beginning, I noticed that the edges on this bridge are very sharp. Like literally right now I'm touching it and this is almost needle-ish, needle -esque. So these riders, I th really think they should be smoothed because palm muting is not, it, it, it cuts a little bit. Now on this, I didn't notice that and it is the same bridge. Why didn't I notice it? It is a little bit sharper. And um, my buddy Michio has the DC FAT and checked it and said, nope, not a problem. My buddy Alex has the DC FAT, checked it, said, not a problem. On this one, it's a little bit more pronounced. I'm not the biggest fan of this bridge. It's sharp. It has individual uh, saddles, I get that. And these screws allow you to adjust it this way. It's just not an elegant piece of hardware. So that's the first thing I would want to replace with something good like a, a GraphTech bridge or something else or ABM. And it feels as if it's a little bit sharper. Okay, just saying. We're gonna go get some sounds here. Not a lot because it's got one freaking pickup. Starting with a gremlin right there, a little bit of crunchiness. And then we're gonna go into a couple of different amps. So yeah, that, that's the sound. I don't, what do you do with this? So it does Im immensely cut through the mix. There's not a lot of meat. There's not a lot of... Uh, but what I noticed in the track that I produced, I used the hollow body for the rounder, thicker stuff, and this will cut through a track. No question about that. I'm putting some overdrive on it right here. So same sound with the humbucker in uh, humbucker, so the stack P90. Yeah, if I'm jumping like this, it's literally cutting into my hand a little bit. So that that bridge needs to be smoothed or find a different bridge, Harley Benton. With that sound, I don't hear a major difference. I don't. 
We're gonna move on to a different sound. Let's do the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb. And uh, you're gonna say, I know you're gonna say, while well, you're testing this guitar with all these higher priced amps. Well, there's a very simple reason for that. And I'm gonna say this for the millionth time. If I send this into a cheap amp, and the amp isn't as good as it gets, then what are you hearing? Are you hearing the flaws of the amp or the flaws of the guitar? If I'm pumping this through a $20 China pedal, are you hearing the crappiness of the pedal or the crappiness of the guitar? Especially cheap gear needs to be tested with all this high-end stuff so that if it sounds good, it's not the high-end stuff that's good. It's, it's the sum of all, which means if it sounds good, this can keep up with the high-end stuff. That's the reason why I don't have a cheap amp here, because you simply wouldn't know whether the problem is the guitar or the amp. I hear more of a difference there. the rev generator 740 the green thing on the crunch channel Play guitar. Ah, oh, definitely rounder and softer, and with the P ninety more biting. Achilles, very classic JTM style blown up amp. Thank you. 
The difference is subtle, but it's there. So, back into the gremlin. Some stuff on there. Look, the guitar works. Um, I can't find any flaws except the one thing that doesn't make me super happy. Usually these guitars have several pieces of wood, not just two split in the middle, which is totally fine in that price range. This seems to have one, two, three, and then a diagonal one. Like they're literally gluing together the scrap that other companies don't want, which is fine, but that also means Again, in that price range, totally good, but it also means that uh, this wood has a certain kind of weight and density, this has a certain kind of weight and density from that tree, and then this piece might be different. So you can very clearly see this one piece of wood glued in here, which I've never seen like this. I see the three or four pieces that Hardy Benton guitars are usually made out of, again, in this price range, totally acceptable. This one odd diagonal piece seems weird to me, but, that's what it has. And you can also see it now from the front, which again is fine uh, in that price range. So I'm personally not the biggest fan of one pickup guitars, but it serves a purpose. You want to rock, you want to cut through a mix. This is your baby. Now let's talk about the junior in general. The idea was back in the day, Gibson was going to go and offer a very cheap guitar for department stores. It was a beginner guitar. It was the guitar you could buy for $99 to get you started. So they reduced everything. They made it very simple, smacked one P90 on there. It was a simple, there's no top, there's no bevel. It was a simple guitar for students. I think that's how the um, a junior was made and that was the purpose. Now, of course, with the big G and even Epiphone, the prices go up and up and up and people spend thousands on a junior, which is kind of completely besides the idea of the junior to begin with. The junior was supposed to be an inexpensive instrument for the student. And the big G can't deliver that anymore because you know, they are where they are, and when they do a junior, it's like a thousand bucks, or it's fifteen hundred bucks, or even custom shop junior for three thousand bucks, which is fine for the G. Do it, Mr. G. Hardy Benton brings it back to where the idea originated. Make it an affordable instrument for the beginner. Now, can I recommend that for a beginner? I don't think the neck's a problem. It's not too fat at all. Um, only having one pickup is a little bit reductionist to me, I want more, which is why I would go for the TV yellow something, whatever it's called, um, single cut, single cut special, that's what it's called, single cut special TV yellow. Um, they have the same bridge. This one, when I'm doing palm muting and I'm jumping up and down, is really poking into my hand. Um, so the first thing I would do is exchange the bridge, but I will also have a talk with the product management team at Harley Benton and point out that, uh, maybe those go for a different bridge or maybe those pointy things should be rounded off a bit. However, if you're getting it, all you need to do is probably take a file and take that one down a bit up here. This one's going back, otherwise I would have done it. Otherwise I would have actually put a different bridge in uh, on it in the video right here. Um, that's my, the, the bridge is my one gripe with this guitar. Otherwise, price, tuners, visuals, sounds, playability, it's all there. Take it or leave it, that's what I'm telling you. Thanks for watching. Please use my links, they really help me. Ring the bell, do all that stuff. Please go to Instagram and follow me because uh, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers there and that's not easy. And um, companies look at that shit. So go and do that. Thanks for watching. And I'll say at the end.